welcome to another amazing installment and video here in Sunset Park. Yeah. Very nice, very sunny. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Excited about this. We are going to be talking about relationships yeah. and Venus and Aries, which may be a pretty scary but very invigorating very passionate uh even better because she personally has venus and aries that's herself. right <laughs> so we have a very experienced individual um but how, how are you feeling i'm feeling great all this this energy today with the conjunctions and pluto retrograde and with venus and aries mercury and aries I, i'm loving it it's feeling good i i never thought Chiron would feel good and <laughs> bigger. I'm so used to it. Uh, I have it in Cancer and it was in Pisces, so yeah. so used to like having to not hide my vulnerabilities, but just feel sensitive. But now it almost feels like empowering to own up to it. So. Yeah, especially for me as a Pisces Sun, for those of you who are unaware, I just spent the last like eight years, you know, basically in bed with Chiron and it was it was intense, really, really intense. So I am very happy to pass him along to Aries and yeah. it feels great, great for me at least. <laughs> I've actually read that um, Chiron and Venus together, at least in Sinistry, it brings, uh, it's supposed to be a marker of true love. <laughs> so I feel like now that it's trining, it's definitely going to bring it's definitely going to like heal and I, I I just realized that now and underestimated how healing it will be. Yeah. To be honest about, you know, desire and Absolutely, healing to the that. self and there's so there's so many magical connections happening right now. I see it in my personal life, I see it in the lives of many others. Yeah. And so many new friends coming together, so many light workers are saying, I have felt so alone for so long. And now I'm finally being surrounded with people that I feel like are my tribe. And that in and of itself is like, makes you feel all the love in the world. It's definitely very fortunate. It, um, I'm tripping out too because, you know, considering this transit and just love in general, I'm looking right now at this very epic volleyball game. And <laughs> I, it feels very Venus and Aries S to me. Just having it does having to be focused and coordinated but even mm -hmm. though you have two people on opposite teams they have to work together to keep the game going absolutely um, and very aries like with their shirts off yeah. and tanned chests and <laughs> it's like it the warriors of the, the volleyball court <laughs> they're not playing around but they're playing so i think that's that's pretty dope but um yeah this is this is really awesome to have the opportunity to converse about and mm -hmm. get to really explore because I think this go around will have will have like a dynamic with these transits that is unique and has never really been open before, you know, with different kind of relationship politics, what's what's oh, yeah. allowed. Um, especially, you know, we're not in the 50s anymore when yeah. certain gender roles were enforced. So I think especially for those with, um, uh, you know, basically with the generation where they're, what is it, like 20, it's like, is it like 28 year olds to kind of like 38 year olds or something with the Scorpio and Pluto Scorpio. yeah, Pluto Scorpio, yeah. I think right now particularly are going to feel it so intensely because there's been such a swing from what I, I fall in that that generation and you do as well correct so for us we were raised in these very kind of traditional like lifestyles where our parents were products of you know their their parents who were dealt with world war ii i mean back in the 50s when things were just uh 50s 60s growing up in that time period where things were so traditional where you you know you go to church you have your white picket fence you so when we were raised in these households being told to be love is a certain way, relationships look like this, home and family look like this, and yet that was the complete distortion of the reality we were experiencing, yeah. that what's happened now, I think particularly with our generation, is that there's been this wide pendulum swing from you know in, in wanting to reject these sharp, traditional, 
quote unquote white picket fence type values to the, the complete opposite end where we have all the subjects that you hear about with uh, you know polyamory and just different you know having like you know marriage is dead and all these types of things and so I think what's this is just my personal prediction is that now because that pendulum has swung so far this way, it's going to come back now, particularly with this Pluto energy, with this Venus energy, that there's going to be this happy ground where people realize, okay, what I saw growing up may not have been what is reality, but neither is this kind of other side of the pendulum that it's gone to. There's going to be a happy medium. There's going to be a balance where I can experience love in a way that feels right to me and doesn't have to necessarily be any type of extreme. So true. I, um, I really, I really do feel like there's a, a return and comeback of like authentic, uh, conscious based relationships. Yes, yeah. yes. And I actually, I thought it was it. David, um, David Palmer, Leo King. He mentioned about how not all, you know, sometimes in in our spiritualist community, many people want to say like, you know, to kind of like break down the system. Like it's completely broken and and he's just one individual and there's other people who speak about this as well where they say like it's taken a long time for certain systems and structures to organization of society to be created and it's not completely faulted and it, you can't just destroy that and then have chaos that's not a good alternative so that's where i think maybe some of our generation are going to be pioneers when it comes to relationships and love to basically bring about a reformation of a broken system like not a complete destruction of it like the complete opposite extreme pendulum but a restructuring and an, an enhancement of what was somewhat broken I, I, I think it's fascinating that you say that because the system has gotten to a place where it's like after so much turmoil it's like finally at a place where you, you can build on it yes so to actually ironically be at a place where radical adherence is at an all-time high i would say although most of it may be unwarranted but also most of it will reflect um you know people who might have experienced things in a different way um it's really nice to see this come head to head yeah and and a lot of this has ironically a lot to do with love and like people getting together and yeah. breaking the breaking the norms against what race is should get a lot I'm pretty sure there's a time where we can really yeah I know right like, like it would be a total taboo <laughs> that desire to I get it's that intensity with the Pluto and Scorpio to destroy yes but instead to reform yeah to reform to refine to enhance and so actually you do see it within some of the even older generations within the, the spiritualist community you look at people like Tony Robbins if you're subscribed to his like Instagram feed you will notice there's been a big spike in marriage type content in a showing of their partners I've noticed it um, definitely certain, you know, very prestigious people within the community, you know, guiding leaders within within the community for mankind today. And they're really trying to speak out to like show that, that if you do believe in the institution of marriage, that's something that resonates with you as the right path for you. It's not dead. It's not dead. It's just the old system of it needs to be reformed. Yeah. And that's why I think there's many people trying to, you know, come forward and show positive examples of what it can look like. And that's certainly something I've been trying to do as of late, even on my Instagram and things, to show people, uh, you know, it, it, it's not, it doesn't have to be one or the other, like what we were raised with that seems broken versus something completely off, you know, to the other end. Like you can find something in the middle that resonates for you that feels good with someone who is as another authentic sovereign being that is a good fit for you. Oh, no, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's a very... And making it work. Uh, that that's definitely something personally by what you said in, uh, initially you know being told going up that if you get married you should never get divorced like this is a bond that shouldn't last forever yeah and then you know my parents recently got divorced yeah and ironically if it wasn't for like understanding 
understanding, I don't want to say spiritual, but just understanding like how cycles occur and, and how transits affect um, energy. It would have been very easy for me to like shut off to the concept and i mean i'm sure like everyone uh i've had my moments where i've doubted if marriage and love is really worth it um but you know it's just something about connecting with that right person that yeah absolutely like totally, that's yeah. that's all it is it's the same thing for for those who are raised in like a staunch religion and they no longer now resonate with that as, you know, again, that's another like strong tradition. It's the same thing for me when I broke away from the religion of my youth that I was raised in. At first, I completely disconnected spiritually yeah. altogether because I didn't know how to be spiritual without being religious. And it was in time that I was able to temper that and find the median to then build my own form of spirituality without religion. It didn't need to be that I'm either religious and spiritual or you know, hedonistic and whatever. Like, you know, it's there. You get to create your own reality, your own dream life. It's, I'm all about. That's all I preach about is like creating your dream life and living in an authentic way. So, whether it's it's marriage or any other form of institution, it doesn't have to be one or the other, black or white. This world is not black or white. It's myriads of shades of every color. Spoken from a Pisces. <laughs> Let's say the concept of marriage, I would have blindly um, probably got married in a church. And I didn't think much of it until I realized what if that might go against certain facets of, like to me it's like, okay, you know, this is what, especially uh, when I when I talked to my mother, like I had an honest talk with her a while ago and I thought she was the type of woman that would be stressed about like, why don't you have, why don't, why don't you have any children? How come I'm not a grandmother? Um, why aren't you married? And I mean, she was totally the opposite. She's like, yeah, don't, I wouldn't, if you don't even want to get married, like I wouldn't even, it, it's a totally different climate now. Yeah. She did mention stuff though about like, you know, make sure she's a Christian woman. And, you know, I realized that would, and, and honestly, I would have no problems marrying a Christian woman if we connected authentically. But it really opened up the possibility of, you know, meeting somebody who wasn't and not getting married in a church and, and having a different private you know ceremony yeah these are questions i'm really having to like think seriously about this is a huge thing to bring up i'm so glad that you brought that up because for those of you who are unaware i was raised in the lds church or mormon from as many of you probably know it as the mormon church right so you know that's a huge deal within that church people get married within the temple it's you know you you generally only marry someone of the same faith and different things and of course by the time i met my husband i wasn't an active practicing member of that uh, faith anymore anyways but even with that being said me being an incredibly highly spiritual person it is the foundation of my life of my work as a professional everything my husband does not identify with any religion or really any spirituality and it was sad guru who i love if you're not subscribed to him you should subscribe to him too the man's genius but he has talked a lot about how spirituality is a personal thing and that it does not matter if your partner is of the same faith if they are of the same spiritual belief systems that that is a personal thing and you should not your love and your union should not be dependent upon it now granted it can it, if you are someone who let's say you are of a particular religious faith and so there is very specific uh, ritualistic type things to your spirituality and practice that could be troublesome or create challenges if you're with someone especially when it comes to children and things that they're not of the same faith but I can tell you personally speaking having a very healthy, happy, thriving marriage, my husband and I do not share like any <laughs> same spiritual beliefs. And I'm like, spirituality is my life. Being, I'm a Pisces sun and a Sag moon. Like my spirituality is everything. And it does not have to be the determination of a healthy union, whether it's you're married or you just live together, you're committed, you're dating. It, it's not dependent. So if you want to, if you really love someone, you want to be committed, it does not matter if they have the same spiritual beliefs. That's where both people have to be mature, they have to be sovereign, and they have to say, that's okay if you believe that. And even be willing to have discussions, listen to it, and be like, that's an interesting way of looking at that. That's not really how I feel. My husband and I have intellectual, spiritual discussions all the time, where he 
believes very little necessarily of what I believe, and it has zero interference with our with our marriage. And it just proves that you know love is going to be more powerful than beliefs and philosophy. Absolutely. Because it it'd be very the way like Islam and Christianity is designed. It's impossible to um, without love. It's impossible to like really make something like that last because they are trained to only be just like Rachel just said with someone in that same faith mm -hmm. so you'd really have to love them but what what really this, what this transit especially is um, pinpointing and bringing home to me the most is that you, you have to you really have to I'm gonna I'm gonna say self love. But yes, no, exactly. Love yourself. You have to love yourself, and and not really in the cliche like oh love yourself way, but like you really have to. I, I might even almost say, especially if you're single, like prioritize. Oh, hundred percent. You and and what you love, so that you have a full cup to yes. pour for somebody else. Even if you're even if you're not single, you're coupled. And coupled. It still comes first. I can't even tell you how many female clients that I work with, coaching clients who feel guilty. I mean, these women are exhausted, they're working, they're going to school maybe, they're a mom, they're a wife, they're haggard, they're tired, everything, and they feel guilty about wanting to go to yoga once a week. Like, well, you know, like, I don't get to make dinner that night. No, you cannot give to anyone from a cup that is bone dry and empty. You give first to yourself, and that is the best way to be the best mom or, or father, or to be the best wife, or to be the best husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, or single person, you always give first to yourself. It's like, I always like to think of the Nine of Pentacles, right? Yeah. In the tarot, where you see this beautiful, gorgeous, obviously wealthy woman, she's got it all. You see her, she's got her hand. These are my, I think it's the six pentacles on the one side. You yeah. know, th these are my pentacles. And because I never dip into this stash and it just keeps filling up and filling up, I now have these three pentacles. I can toss them, I don't care if, they get thrown away, if they get misused, if they get taken advantage of, or I don't care because I always got my six stashed to the side. So now I can give from a fully abundant cup because I'm never giving more than what I've got for myself. And that is 100% the best way you can be the best friend, lover, mother, father, sister, brother. Uh, yes. So this is the time. If you've been needing more self-care, if you've been needing more sleep, if you've been needing um, more time, and it only makes you, if you're single, it only makes you that much more of an attractive person. Who wants to be with someone who has nothing going on and you are the soul and center of their universe? Like, they need to have their own interests, their own hobbies. It's what makes someone sexy anyways. So if someone needs their, you know, one weekend a month to go backpacking or whatever, that makes them an interesting and dynamic person. And if that's how they recharge, then it's also going to make them probably a lot more pleasant to be around. True that. Mm -hmm. So you take that and you own it and don't apologize for it. It's a, it's a great time to rediscover what you love. Um, I know doing consultations and uh, with my own personal experience, uh, Rachel and I were talking earlier here and she was saying that it's difficult to be single during this period because there's this intense need to know who you are and how are you going to connect with someone else. But with Venus in, in uh, Aries, uh, the Nine of Pentacles is Venus in Virgo. And in order to get there, it starts with Venus in, in Aries where you have to bring yourself to the table and really redefine what it is you love so you know what you can bring to a relationship. And like I was saying, like there's a lot of people in consultations that are too focused on who is this next lover mm. that I'm going to manifest? Mm -hmm. What's his sign? Um, I, this is the reason why I do love reading, so that I, I put it in a way where it's like, oh, find out who your lover is, and I turn it around and I'm like, your lover is you. Like, is like, <laughs> That's right. This is what you have to <laughs> You've got to make love order, to yourself first. <laughs> you know, in order to eventually yeah. connect with someone who will see, be attracted to that light. Exactly. And, you know, definitely get there. A wise piece of advice my mother always gave me, which is what we were kind of briefly discussing before starting our filming, she always said, you are what you attract or you attract what you are and when I was younger I would say yeah yeah that makes sense but I really hadn't fully processed and embodied that information and it's interesting it's it's something that I work with people now if that if you 
are finding yourself in these cyclical patterns of dating the same kind of person, i.e. someone who <laughs> probably doesn't appreciate you, doesn't respect you, maybe takes advantage of you or hurts you, right? And there's a lot more to that. There can be all kinds of factors of maybe even prior abuse or trauma, you know, cultural, societal, religious things having grown up. There's a lot of factors that can lead into why someone's having these relationship patterns. But most certainly, if you find that you keep attracting and dating the wrong kind of people, I would always tell someone, like, it doesn't matter if we're talking about dating or any other aspect of your life, you always want to first look at yourself because there is where you'll find the answers and there is the only place that you have empowerment and abilities to spark change. So there's a very easy exercise people can do where if you think of your dream partner and you being a king of manifestation are all about rituals, writing things down, putting it out into the universe in a tangible physical way, right? Actually writing it. You write what that dream list is. What does your dream man look like? What does your dream woman look like? And then if it's a checklist, like say it's just, I don't know, random examples in the checklist might be someone who's affectionate, someone who's hardworking, someone who is spiritual, someone who takes their health seriously, um, someone who loves children, you know, like whatever your list looks like for you, then you take another piece of paper or you line the paper in half and you look at yourself and see out of those aspects, those qualities, which of those do you currently possess? And right there will be such an enlightening experience to tell you because it's going to go one of a couple ways, right? Either you're going to look at your dream person checklist and you're going to look at you and how you compare to that and it's going to be either that you match it tit for tat almost Yet, then when you think about, okay, well, what about the person on average I've been dating? Do they meet that checklist? And that's, that's really almost the most powerful um, result of this exercise because if you know what your dream person looks like and you essentially are your own dream person and you're not dating those dream people, then there is some issues with boundary setting, standards, uh, maybe uh, lifestyle where you're going to seek these potential partners, or the other possibility for this exercise is that you're going to do the checklist of Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright and you're going to do your own checklist and realize you don't, you're not even currently living or possessing half or you know whatever of the qualities you're looking for. Then again, it brings empowerment because you realize where you possibly have a lot of room for growth or change. And then at that point, as your coach, I'd say, and you don't even need to be stressing about dating. Forget the party. Get your ass at the gym yeah, you know, or whatever. Like true. you need to look at who are you being in comparison to this dream person. And it's going to tell you either which way where you can spark change in your life and be empowered in manifesting your dream partner. And uh, so beautifully said, uh, I actually have real life experience of this where I actually spoke to the universe and I had an open discussion. I'm like, this is the type of woman that I want to manifest in my life. Someone who is also into music, um, I could probably play more of a support role. And like we, we both we both be individually powerful in our own right, but I mean she'd definitely be more of the star in say our duo group, and she would have certain qualities and attributes, and it's crazy because like in less than a day, this this woman actually adds me on Instagram. Awesome sauce. And, yeah, <laughs> and I'm looking at Get her it. <laughs> This is a while ago, I'm looking at her profile, and like, she's, she's a musician, I couldn't believe it, even her name, which was like, almost a jab in the universe, just for like a sign, and um, the thing that really, uh, the thing that really humbled me was that when I was honest with myself, I felt like I didn't have certain attributes that would allow me to match the energy she brought and so that manifested in me not feeling confident enough to even approach her and like to really keep things going which I'm still working on kudos but, to you though for like being humble enough and self-aware enough to recognize that that's yeah that's big but I mean still uh it's just amazing how quickly you're yeah. ready. Yeah, I, I actually, I have personal experience with it as well, right? So I, before I met my husband and I was single and doing the whole dating game and 
lonely and unhappy and frustrated and all of that of like 10 years of being a single mom and trying to find Mr. Right and everything. And I, one night, <laughs> um, I sat down and I was just like, I was so broken that night, like on my knees praying and like I wrote a list of Mr. what Mr. Right would be, my dream man. And I didn't go through the whole exercise that I just told you about. I just made the list of what I wanted to manifest, like what would be an ideal partner for me. And it wasn't like, you know, petty things such as hair color, things like that. It was quality traits, hardworking, honest, you know, this kind of stuff, right? Uh, spiritual, whatever it may be. Uh, I don't remember you know, all the things off the top of my head. And I had stashed the list away in one of my many boxes of poetry and writing and whatever. Forgot about it. Um, about, about a month or so before my wedding, I was doing my, on my minimalism kick and purging a bunch of stuff. I found the list. No joke, it had about 30 items-ish on it, and my husband met every single one of those aspects, but like, I think three or four. It was so touching to me and so mind-blowing, the, the power of intention and manifestation in written form when you put out with like an intensity, this is what I want, and I will stand for nothing less, and I'm willing to work however hard I need to work to earn it, to deserve it. How, how powerful that is. It was, it was so touching to me that I actually read the list. Um, my husband didn't even know about it. I read it at our, our wedding dinner night um, to his fam, our family and to him to, 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 to show, you know, like the beauty of it, I guess. So I've had personal experience with it as well. And congratulations. Thank you. That's, that's, a, uh, that's really awesome to actually manifest and make a, a union of broad work. So that concludes uh, our first part we're barely just scratching the surface. We're gonna Oh go. yeah, we got some juicy stuff in part two. Oh yeah, so we're gonna go a lot more into what you can expect from the transits. Mm -hmm. uh, please feel free to comment any questions or, or comments below, especially your video suggestions in the future too, that you may have. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will also be drawing some tarot cards and predictions, so stay tuned to that <laughs> very soon. And uh, yeah, thank you once again. Yes, thank you. Always a pleasure. <laughs>